So this is session three of five for Urban Shadows. Uh, this is one of those sort of uh, uh, more uh, tighter, intimate sessions. Uh, we had a couple of players have to drop due to dog picking up and being sick. Um, and Fraser has vanished into the wind. Um, so who knows? Maybe he is just laying low. Um, he's really, really getting into his character and hiding out. It makes sense um, for the wizard to do that. So uh, we will do that. So we have uh, Sato uh, back and we have Salome uh, here again. And we are following up uh, from last session, uh, uh, sort of in the wake of that, but not the immediate wake. But we're going to kind of roll back a little bit. We're going to check in with Sato. As Sato is one of the tainted, which means that he has some jobs, some duties that, that he carries out. Uh, so uh, I've got two questions for you. The first one is, Sato, where do you go to get patched up? Because you've got some, some grievous, got a level of grievous blunt trauma. Do you just go to the hospital? Oh, no, probably not. Um, is there like a, uh, I'm imagining like a, um, you know, like a really nice old, um, been in Baltimore for a while, like, um, you know, sushi restaurant or sake house or something like that with mm -hmm. some, uh, some shady back rooms. Okay. Um, maybe some, some friends from a long time ago, um, used to own this or their family still owns it or something like that. And, and you go there, uh, is, is this just a place for you to relax or is there somebody here that can heal you? I think there's someone here that is not necessarily very good at it, but can definitely do it. Um, you know, like maybe they were um, in the military for a little bit or dropped out of med school or something like that. You know, they're not a professional, but um, they know how to not make it worse. Um, yeah. So uh, let's assume it was somebody that, that has been around for a while. Um, uh, somebody on staff, uh, you, you ring the bell or whatever, uh, and the, you know the people here know who you are, and they kind of slide you into a back room there, uh, and uh, your your person, male or female? Uh, female. Female. Woman, uh, older, uh, uh, Japanese woman, uh, s served. Uh, uh, in the military uh, as a medic, uh, but mostly emergency kind of thing. And uh, she looks at you and uh, she gets out her kit um, and, you know, starts to look at where you've got, I mean, it's all blunt trauma, but it's some heavy bruising and things like that. And she'll look to make sure you're not concussed and she'll check that out. And she will say, Yakuza came around. Yes, I encountered them as well, unfortunately. But I they, believe they think I'm dead now. Okay. And I should keep it that way? <laughs> yes, please. Uh, for your own sake as well. I don't want them bothering you. I'm sorry they came by here at all. Hope it wasn't too much trouble. No, they... They were very polite, but firm, asking about you. That's good. I'm glad they didn't uh, mess with your uh, your clientele or anything like that. No. No, we haven't seen them around in Baltimore. This is the first. Sound like they came came from New York. Came down here from there. I think they came specifically to find me. Uh, at least that's what the the leader seemed to to think. You be careful. Thank you. I will certainly try. Um, and uh, she will will send you on your way. Um, but of course, your 
a, a demon, you've got a job to do. And you've got two kinds of jobs. One is collecting debts and one is negotiating contracts, right? Those are the two kinds of things that you do. So uh, the power faction is the faction that has wizards, oracles, uh, uh, the hallowed who are sort of people touched with the spiritual energy and even the immortals. Um, so what I would like you to do is roll with power and let's see what you roll. Um, and, uh, I will put the die roller in the chat here. And then I'm going to ask based on that about the debt that you are or contract that you're negotiating. Okay. I've got no bonus to power, so I rolled a seven. Okay. Um, so things are not necessarily as smooth as you would want. So are you are you collecting a debt or are you negotiating a contract with someone from power? I think I'm negotiating a contract. Okay. With a with a wizard, with a seer, hallowed, mortal. Uh, someone that would have some some artifacts, so probably either an immortal or a wizard, I would think. Okay. Which would you prefer? Um, since we've already got two wizards we're dealing with, let's uh, go for the immortal. Okay. Um, so you're negotiating a contract with a uh, an immortal named Matthew Leathers. And uh, let me grab a picture for, for him and we'll put that in. Insert that open image because I love my pictures. So I've got to go and get more of these there. And let me grab that. All of these pictures are fantastic. I'm very happy with the, <laughs> the set of things that I've chosen there. I think we just do it real simple. What is the contract that you're negotiating? What is it that is is being worked out here? Um, I think there is a older artifact or item of some importance to my patron um, probably something japanese or something to do with um with japan so it doesn't necessarily have to come from japan you know but maybe something um <clears throat> maybe like a an ancestral um, mon or like symbol from from our family that was um, sold to some Americans at some point and brought back over here as kind of just like a, you know, they might not have thought much of it at the time, but it means a lot to to my patron. And and leathers has I want you to imagine kind of a weird accent that you can't quite place. Uh, it's a mix of of some southern drawl and maybe some Caribbean. Hard to hard to place it. He's, it's 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 clearly uh, odd, and he's kind of paused in the middle of this negotiation. You've put a lot on the table, and he says, "You know, I invested significantly to acquire this object, a new." could see that it was going to be important to someone that's that's how i make my livelihood as it were uh mr sato uh so i appreciate the 
the bits and things that uh, your patron has put on the table. But I want to know what you're going to do for me. Well, you mentioned something uh, very interesting there. You said that you knew this item was going to be of great importance. It meant something to someone. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there's something that means something to you that you don't have yet. <laughs> oh, I've burned all those things away a long time ago. Uh, but that's an interesting interesting premise that you put forward maybe something that i would want you run in interesting circles don't you i try not to but it happens here is what i would like and I'll put this on collateral for you. We'll make this deal, but it's something that I want. And essentially, uh, 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 consider it a debt to me. I'll tell you what I want as the way you can clear that debt, but maybe you'll find another way. Sounds reasonable. There is a fay. in Baltimore from the summer court who has avoided me for a number of years. And I would like to have a face to face with that Fay. Well, I should probably ask getting involved in this, is this a, uh... A friendly relationship you have with this Fay, would you say, or um, more antagonistic? Well, let's see. They've avoided me for a number of years, and I'm asking a demon to help get me a a face to face. I just wanted to be clear. Mm. Does that seem it's like something you can maybe look into? I think so. If you can, uh, if we can make this this deal for my patron i will make this deal if uh you will uh consider looking into this certainly it's the least i can do for uh for someone working with uh, with us so so well the phase name is keel soulsmith And uh, here is the object. You may have that, may pass that on to your patron. Thank you. You're more than welcome. I hope to, to, to see you soon. If you find any more um, artifacts like these, let me know. We'll see. And so you have completed a job technically, which means that you actually get a debt on your patron. Sounds exciting. Um, and because I think that, it, yeah, that's your essentially your your demonic jobs move. Uh, so let me cut over from you to Salome. Salome in the aftermath of the incident. Um, Nikoru will seems annoyed that he had to spend his debt with uh, Jenny Luck, um, and he will head off. And your Oracle nursing a significant hangover will also head off. Um, and Hugo's like, "Hey, hey, you want you want to translate this book for me now?" That's right. I forgot about the translation. Hmm. I mean, if you've got time, if you don't, I understand, but demon book. 
Yeah, I think Salome will agree. I'm tired of this book. Okay. <laughs> I want to see what it's about. <laughs> Get to the Absolutely. Um, so uh, you will go into his sanctum and uh, you will do some translation work. Um, and let me see. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to have you roll mind. Okay. And on a 10 plus, you get to tell me what the book is. Okay. Whatever you want. On a seven to nine, we'll both say something about the book. On a six or less, I get to say what the book is. Sounds good. Reroll. The six. <laughs> <laughs> so this book uh, is very much a a guide to war against the winter court and how to make time itself a weapon against the winter court fay <laughs> i think um do you tell Hugo that? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> what do I say, though? Now, for narrative purposes, I'm going to assume the book cannot be removed from his sanctum, just to, to put a thing so we don't steal that from Frazier. But um, sure. what do you tell Hugo? Hmm. <laughs> I think, um, like, Hugo, this is just a catalog. It's just a listing of these old, dusty fairy artifacts. Most of them have been lost. I haven't even heard of half of them. I don't know what any of this stuff is. Oh, but maybe there's something. Uh, he, he asks, you know, can, can you translate it or can you give me a key so I can unravel this? Um... Or do you need to find something to do that? I think I'll just keep lying. Okay. <laughs> like, um, like, no, Hugo, sorry, there's no key. It's just, you know, a specific dialect of a specific Fang language. I mean, you know, if you've got decades, I guess you could study it. And he goes, I do. <laughs> and, uh, um, and once it's clear that, that he's not getting anything more from you, his attention goes to, to the book and him trying to work through it. <laughs> For his. So let me ask you, uh, Salome, um, when that is, is done, what, what is your, your, your network like? Like, who do you go to for help outside of the group or advice or or to, to act as an intermediary, intermediary or, or what? what? What's your supernatural mm -hmm. life in the, the politics like? That's interesting. Yeah, I was... Hmm. I'm thinking... I like intermediary a lot, and I took a ghost town move, so I'd I like to keep the ghosties on screen if, as much as sure. possible. So maybe I'm like... Maybe I, I peddle out my services to uh, mediate between uh, night and power, like specifically ghosty factions and like other wizards and stuff. I kind of leverage this like unique winter court famous, um, like this imaginary power. Right, right. No, they don't know better. I mean, uh, and here's the thing. There is a certain amount of, we know... Uh, uh, some contact between the Fae and the ghosts. Um, and we also know that Shiloh, that wizard, has, you know, has put pressure on the Fae and is no friend of the ghosts. So there's some interesting things there. So who would you go talk to from amongst the specters? Do you go to Costa again or do you have, do you have a, do you have a friend? Yeah. Um, 
I, I guess how about this? Let, let's let's do your your hit the streets move. Oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> so, so what is it you're looking for? <clears throat> I think what I'm looking for, um, <clears throat> I think it feels like a lot of the power balance has been mixed up and jumbled around, um, especially with like the summer court kind of going all out against the ghosts and stuff. So I think I'm looking for. Uh, someone to help me rebalance uh, the scales, I guess, in the city, as it were. Okay. So, so a ghost who might be willing to to broker, you know, or at least sit down at the table hmm. uh, to to make things uh, better. Okay. Um, let's have you roll, hit the streets, um, and uh, the uh, specters are night. Plus zero. God, I got a four. This game is cursed. <laughs> it is a little <laughs> cursed, isn't it? Um, so let's look at the uh, the hit the streets move there. Uh, the good news is you get to mark night. Yeah. Um, oh, that's already marked now. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I think when you go to see your specter person that, you know, what, what, what kind of location are they at usually? Um, maybe there's like a, um, a closed down train station entrance or subway station, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, uh, essentially they, they were going to do, I mean, they've got a little bit of above, above ground rail in Baltimore, but some of the other plans that they had got, got squashed. Um, maybe it's one of the other places they used to have, uh, uh, essentially the kind of, uh, cable, like, not like cable cars, like local transport that got taken out. Mm -hmm. Um, so you will go to that place and it's, it's dark, it's dusty humid summers, you know, in the northernmost of the south in some ways. Uh, and uh, you go in and, you know, you go to the place where uh, you would usually meet your companion and this figure will materialize and you will see Shiloh. Salome. Shiloh. You're not who I, who I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think we got it off the wrong foot here, my fine winter court friend. Yeah, you sick the summer court on me. <laughs> I said that's a pretty bad foot to get off on. But, uh, you managed to evade them, so I am impressed. That cost me some cost me some pull to do that. So we've been chasing each other for a long time. I don't know why you're still surprised when you're impressed by me. Well, when you were still in Washington, it wouldn't have surprised me because you had the backing of your court. But here, you're on your own. Oh, I think Salome's on edge, of course. But I want to try and get close to, uh, like, physically close to Shiloh. And I want okay. to use a little magic on him. <laughs> All right. What do you want to do? I want to use Bedlam. And I just want to, like, I want to make sure that I'm fine in this situation. So I want him to, like feel a lot of infatuation with me. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I don't, you don't even have to roll for that one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll just mark corruption to direct okay. at me. Or well, I, I will, when I use a fairy power. Okay. So yeah, I have choices to make the no rolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I'm just going to mark two corruption and take a corruption move. Ooh. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, 
I'm, I'm very, very curious about what your corrupt, corruption move is going to be here. Um, so Shiloh, th there's maybe a little bit of, of infatuation and already fascination Shiloh has with you. You, you've stated that, that he's, you know, interacted with you in the past. And so he is sort of, you know, puffs himself up in that magey sort of grandiose way, wanting to impress, um, you know, and he'll say, so I understand that, that you have a book I'm looking for. Um, yeah, I think, um, <laughs> Salome is probably playing with the collar of his jacket or something, so they're just keeping the whole vision going. And, she, uh, she's like, a book? What could you need with a book? It's a very special book. Taken from a place that, uh, had been warded against a number of us, but apparently someone broke that seal I just I just want to have a look at it and you think I have this book I don't I don't steal things I don't break into anywhere see I have it reliable you know from the grapevine that you were were there well say that I was there and say that maybe I Maybe I could possibly know who has this book. But what what could you do for me, Shiloh? I will I will offer you a debt myself or I have some pull with the summer court and I could give you some of that leverage with them. Yeah, I think I like that. I don't think I want to mess with the summer court. Um, yeah, it's always just like, hmm, that's interesting. And who do you know in the summer court? I know a number of people. Is there someone specifically that you'd like to lean on? I, I'd i heard that you were close with someone went to summer court, but I never got the details on that. Oh, you don't need to worry about that, Shiloh. <laughs> You've got Fair. all my attention right now. Fair enough. All right. I... Just stay available. If when I when I'm looking to to move on the summer court, I'll let you know. Oh, then who has the book? <clears throat> How would I arrange a meeting for you? Oh, you don't need to arrange a meeting. I just need to know who has the book. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Look, uh, look. Here's the thing. Whoever has the book has put you in the line of fire. And I'm so sorry for that. Have they apologized to you for putting mm. you there? No, they don't care about anything but themselves. <laughs> hmm. Then I see no problem for you just giving me a name. You don't have to trouble yourself any further then. It's a big ask, Shiloh, selling out a coworker. <laughs> You're not. You're you're offering me a reference. You're not selling them out. All right, I'll tell you. It's Hugo Smith. Really? Yeah. I, I can't thought... read it. It's kind of funny to watch. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I will have a conversation with Hugo. I will not tell him obviously where this info came from. Um, but uh, you call me when you need an assist with the summer court and I will, 
I will provide that service for you. Oh, I will. I'll give you a little peck on the cheek. Maybe, maybe we can, maybe our, our, our needs, our, our, our goals will align in the future here. I feel lucky, Shiloh. He will, will nod, um, and he will apparate away. Um, he does it in the most sort of showy kind of uh, uh, turns into ashes and those kind of fall to the ground way. Just showing off. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so let me cut from you uh, and and bring us back to to Sato. Um, uh, Sato, uh, should we frame you uh, with Salome, or do you want to have a, a convo with your boss? What do you think? Um, I don't particularly need to have a convo with my boss. Mm -hmm. I think um, being with Salome makes the most sense. Okay. And uh, especially because I just want to kind of offhandedly mention this name, this name that I now have. And uh, see how Salome reacts to it. Okay. Uh, well, you know Salome, uh, the 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 one place that you have as a certainty uh, is the the club that she works at. Yeah. Did we I give that did. club a name, Salome? No, I don't think we did. Let's name it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, what's your club? I mean, it's like the dancing sprite or something like that. The dancing sprite. I like that. Come get a two dollar Jaeger shot at the dancing sprite. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in the eighties when the big thing was sitting around the Jaeger girls. So mm. that was uh so uh Salome, do you uh, is it okay to assume that Sato will find you back at work? Yeah, I think so. Okay. If I'm looking for balance and I'm trying to reestablish that, then I'm probably trying my best to stick to a normal routine. Have you chosen your corruption move? Oh, um, yeah, I think I want to do everyone's got one. Touch someone mark corruption to declare one of their vulnerabilities. All damage is treated as plus one, arm and AP. Oh, that is a nasty one. That's good. <laughs> So uh, Ariva is, is glad to see you back. Uh, they, they say some of your friends came by. Some of your not friends came by. A lot of people came by looking for you. And no one bought a drink? A couple of them did. A couple of them were polite. Others, not so much. Sorry about that, Ariva. You know I try to keep my personal life out of business. It's all good. It's all good. Glad to have you back. Um, you know, if you want to be on the schedule, we'll get you back in there. Yeah, I, I've been out too much. I, I need to get back to normal. Absolutely. I'll bump some of these no talent hacks and put you up on stage. I remember you're so honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're good. Many of them think they're good. And they're not. Well, maybe they'll stick around and watch playing something. Yeah. No, they're going to be caddy in the corners. That's what's going to happen. But fair enough. They'll be drinking. <laughs> um, and and let's assume that in the evening, to, tell, to, to give us a frame for Sato arriving, tell me what Salome's performance looks like. Mm, what does yeah. she do? What does she do? Hmm, I want, what does she do? Yeah, I want it to be like very classic burlesque cabaret type of stuff. So maybe not necessarily. Well, no, yeah, I think it's just a burlesque show. Okay. Yeah, just a little burlesque dance. Maybe some of the girls that got kicked were like more comedy burlesque acts. Mm-hmm. No, no one's feeling it. But, but serious, a little more burlesque torch kind of thing um do you do you do you just sing or do you also play an instrument or what what do you imagine that yeah i think just singing i think okay. it's like very simple and that's part of the other okay um and uh wh what what 
show are you singing from? Oh, this is, I don't know, the <laughs> classic burlesque numbers, unfortunately. Um, like I something from Three Penny Opera or something like that, or? Yeah, I'm really unfamiliar with the actual. Okay, like, all right. Some names, unfortunately, <laughs> I went too far. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Um, but I, I love that image um, of Salome there, and you know, as you're singing, you will see Sato come in. And Sato, now I, I know we have that picture of your demon form, but what what do you look like in in your sort of the human form for Sato? Uh, he's kind of got like salt and pepper short hair um he's, it's got some some product in it you know he's kind of got it like um well manicured and, and everything he's got a goatee that's also salt and pepper and um he generally walks around with like business suit tie like full full thing very corporate looking so he can do these these deals yeah as professionally so, as possible so good looking japanese corporate 30 something I think older, like maybe oh. 35 or... Okay. Um, but you've got the, the beard and stuff that kind of breaks a little bit of that image. Um, and uh, so, so you know, you get a lot of looks when you come into the club. Have you been in here before? I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Arriva will will uh, uh, know you as uh, uh, one of Salome's colleagues. And uh, we'll see you there. And, and Salome, you will see... See Sato uh, uh, come and get seated. You haven't seen uh, him for a few days after the the business at the uh, the library. Um, uh, so uh, let's frame essentially after your set. Yeah, maybe. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying maybe um, I probably have a note sent out to you to meet me in the back in like the dressing room. <laughs> We're gonna have some privacy. Sounds good. I'll uh, I'll finish my drink, and um, I'm sure I ordered a drink for Salome as well, and I'll bring it backstage. And it's one of those old buildings that those narrow hallways and the the back and 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 lots of stuff back here. And and there's a general dressing room, and then Salome has her own dressing room, um, but it's it's still small. It's still you know. Uh, 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 you know, maybe three people could fit in here, kind of thing. I assume. Um, uh, and uh, light bulb mirrors and everything. Yes, <laughs> Salome. Do you do you keep a lot of stuff here, or I mean, what what do you what is this like? You know, I think I do actually, because I'm probably at the club most of the time because I need to make rent <laughs> right and, like money to live so i think actually i have this is a, i think i have like a lot of little trinkets from washington and maybe the winter court a lot of things that remind me of home here well lots, lots of little tchotchkes okay <laughs> little ice tchotchkes and things and mm -hmm. okay um and sato arrives with a drink what is your drink of choice salome Um, oh, it's, hmm. I think that it's maybe a Manhattan. Okay. Yeah, sorry, you have to carry a martini all the way back there. <laughs> I was imagining it was a, a martini uh, glass anyway, so. Okay. <laughs> I think Salome, I'm, I'll, I'll like, if you knock or come in or whatever, I'm going to shift up and sit on my desk my vanity vanity yeah. whatever it's called <laughs> yeah um sato oh my god you're i'm glad you're okay <sighs> yes i i didn't get a chance to thank you for your help with the uh unfortunate incident at the at the library how have you been since since all of that i think that may have been a bad decision for everyone involved. But it's, so, it's been a mess. Definitely. Is uh, is everyone else all right? Yeah, everyone's fine. Hugo's obsessed with this book, Nikuru. 
seems to be completely unfeasible as usual. Uh, and I forget Camilla. <laughs> and Camilla comes and goes like she usually does. Um, of course. Of course. You mean that book that uh, that Hugo found down there? I didn't think that was going to lead to anything good. Apparently, everybody wants it. I just want to get rid of it. Hmm. Do you know what it is yet? No. No idea. It's completely indecipherable. <laughs> uh, those, uh, those books can be that way. <laughs> um. Well, it looks like you're back to your back to your life here. That's that's good. Some semblance of normality. I'm trying. How's your uh, how's your hunt going? Can we call it a hunt? Your your quest. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, at least the yakuza hunters that were after me are. I think they believe I'm dead. So the heat's off my back, and I feel a little bit better about that. Yeah, keep your head down. <laughs> so, things are crazy right now. Everybody's looking for everyone. If, I mean, if word gets around that you're being seen, I don't, the Yakuza may bring more than just their henchmen. That's a good point. Speaking of um, everyone looking for everyone else, I was wondering if you might know a fellow Fey whose name I heard thrown around. Keel Soulsmith, does this ring a bell? Keel Soulsmith. Put a face to a name. Yeah, I was gonna ask. World Defection Wild. Wild is one. Okay. Good news is because it's a faction move, you also get to market. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Got an eight, finally. <laughs> okay. Um uh, oh, and Sato, you interacted with power, so uh, you get to mark power and you can take it advance. Um, so on a seven to nine, you know their reputation. So they are a uh, a person amongst the summer court uh, here. Uh, they are one of the ones that dances on the margin. Uh, like sometimes they're in favor with the queen Sometimes they're out of favor with the queen. Uh, uh, they they tend to run risky risky jobs, um, which sometimes blow up in their face. They're they're very much willing to push their luck. Um, is is their deal? Are they connected to, or are they the person that was a former lover from the summer court? Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. I was just thinking that maybe this person also is somehow connected to how I, like, escaped Washington and got set up in Baltimore. Okay. And maybe it's because I had this illicit affair with Keel Solson. And so your your mutual debts have kind of zeroed out. Um, uh, uh, but, but, you know, yeah, you know, you know him. Yeah, I think Salome sighs, uh, uh, and like I think is lost in like maybe some uh, maybe some memories for just a moment. <laughs> but she says, um, "Keel, yeah, I know Keel. Are you looking for him?" Uh, I made a deal with someone I probably shouldn't have, and yes, they. Uh... They'd like to have a conversation with Keel, it seems. Oh, who did you make a deal with? Uh, just an immortal. In the, I was serving my patron. You know, these things happen. How on earth did everyone think you were dead, and you've gotten into just as much trouble as we have? <laughs> I think it follows all of us around. We gotta get out of this town. <laughs> so, you're, yeah. so you're looking for Keel? Do you know if uh, Keel's in Baltimore? Yeah, the summer court 
I don't know if they prefer to, but they keep some kind of leash on Keel. So he should be around. What are you getting out of this deal? Just clearing my debts. I've got enough as it, as it is. Yeah, that's true. All right. Well, listen, I maybe oh, um, I'll see what I can set up, but you might owe me for this one. It's been a while since I've seen Keel. Well, I'll certainly owe you if you want to come with me to meet him. Oh, yeah. I'm not letting you get into this by yourself. <laughs> You almost died last time I left you alone. That's true. You just got back to normalcy, and now I'm dragging you back into it. I guess we really can't stay out of this, can we? No. Frankly, it feels more and more like my life hasn't been normal since I came to Baltimore. <laughs> might as well. Might as well make do something with our time here. Make some big moves. We'll get even eventually. So, Salome, you want to try and contact Keel? Yeah. I put a picture for Keel. How, hmm, how am I going to contact Keel? I think. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just call them, right? Or you text them. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, you'll you'll text them, uh, and uh, I imagine that your phone gets warm at some summer court warmth when he he writes back, and 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 it just says, "Call me." <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to text back and say, text me. <laughs> there is a, a little frowny emoji followed by what? Um, yeah, how do I want to do this? Do you remember that overlook in that one park? where we used to meet some nights. Oh, yeah. Dragged out there on the yeah. <laughs> um, but I got an ellipsis. And then um, what if we met up there again? Such a bad time. Any other time in the middle of a deal. No, I'll call. <laughs> uh, he'll he'll pick up. Mm -hmm. Hey, oh, what's up? I, I thought you were in the middle of a deal. I am in the middle of a deal. Lots of things I got going on here, but I've always got time to answer a call from you. Uh, I remember when you used to skip out on deals to come say hi. Let's have you persuade an NPC. Yeah. Um, heart. My heart's one. Yeah. God, a five. <laughs> hey, I. What so maybe we can meet um and maybe you can help me out with this 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 deal. Um uh why don't you come on down uh to the inner arbor uh to uh the Marriott that's down there? It's the one closest to the aquarium. Um and uh uh, check in at the, the, the desk and uh, 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 ask for Mr. Horn and uh, uh, 
you can come and help me out and then we can talk after I get this all done, okay? All right, sounds like a big deal. I guess I, guess I could help you. Okay, that sounds great. I, it's been too long. It really has, Keel. <laughs> and uh, we'll hang up. Sada, we gotta go. We gotta go through a negotiation. <laughs> so it sounds like you guys have some history. Is this a uh, good history or bad history? If you don't mind me asking. Um, a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. Hopefully, this will be a good chapter. <laughs> Just trying to figure out what I should expect going in. It's, expect some. Some fay bullshit. <laughs> Always do. <laughs> I think Salome changes into um, a pantsuit. She's gonna look presentable. Okay. It's very flowy though. Very like boxy and flowy. And uh, yeah, you two can can drive on down to the inner harbor. Inner Harbor in Baltimore is the touristy section of town. It's built, they've, they've built up all kinds of like little little businesses and things. It has a nice boardwalk on it. There's, there's lots of street performers there, good public space, markets on the weekends. The, the aquarium is, is just down from there. Lots of hotels adjoining it. So it's a very big, very public space. Um, and the hotel is one of those very upscale Marriott's. Um, clearly bought an old Baltimore hotel and renovated it. So they've got all these signs about, sorry about access. You know, this is an old hotel. It's grandfathered in. You know, everything has stairs. Uh, those kinds of signage all over the place um, as you come in. And uh, the concierge will come over to you. You two look super professional. And, and both beautiful people. And uh, good evening. Is there anything I can help you with? I'm like, wrap my arm with Sato's. Um, I say, we're looking for Mr. Horn. Uh, yes, uh, I believe you must be Miss Salome. Yes. I left a note that you were coming and looks kind of at your associate. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, um, if you like, I, I will, I can have someone take you up to the, the penthouse or trails off. The penthouse would be great. Okay. Just straight to the meeting, please. Okay. Uh, so, so if you suggest you don't need a guide, they will simply direct you to the door and they'll say um, uh, they'll give go and get you a key card for the elevator access so that you can can actually get up to that level uh, we'll hand that to you and we'll say uh, I hope you enjoy your visit here yeah and uh, Sato what what's your impression of all this um, I mean I'm used to all kinds of backroom deals the a penthouse might be a little bit above my general normal pay grade but um <clears throat> I, i'm probably used to the unexpected when it comes to dealing with people in uh in this line of work that's and so so you don't feel out of place you don't look out of place um and you will take this up to this penthouse level uh you'll come out go up to the door. Do you knock or do you just go in? I think we just go in, right? So yeah, I think we just go in. Okay. It's one of those beautiful, like out of a movie penthouses where everything is, is beautifully underlit from below. And, you know, you see the, the bar and the, the kitchenette has that sort of walk down to the couch and the big screen TV. And there's a huge uh, balcony and you can see they've got those endless pool things set up out there. Um, and you can see someone is swimming 
but kind of sitting on the 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 couch uh waiting for you uh is keel and uh keel will stand up and sees you and smiles and sees sato and kind of keeps smiling in that way where it maybe freezes just a little he'll he'll come on over to where you're at kind of goes to give you the cheek kiss you didn't say you were bringing anyone <laughs> Kiel, it's so good to see you it has been too long mm -hmm. turns to you sato hi i'm keel and you are i am sato I've been in Baltimore for a while, and I've heard your name around. It's great to finally meet you. I've heard your name as well. Are you here to collect? No, although um, I would be happy to offer my services to someone who is such a good friend of Salome's if you need anything um, at the moment. Ooh, turns to you, Salome. I like him. I like him. I thought you would. Um, and uh, uh, why don't you come in? Um, see, he's he's like, see him doing all the calculations, like how is this going to change what's going on? I'm trying to figure out, you know, and see him kind of maybe just want to kind of get you in and uh, slow sort of soft pedal things. Um, and as you come in, um, you will see whoever was swimming out in the pool gets out. Uh, she dries herself off. Uh, she pulls on a robe and she will walk uh, uh, in here uh, to, to see who's here. Um, and I think both of you can roll uh, with wild. So that name. Uh, seven. Seven? Yes. And Sato? Muted. Three. Three. Got two ones. Okay. You are not happy, not cool uh, when. Unjung Ri, this dragon, walks in from the balcony and she looks at you. Um, what is it that you owe this dragon, Sato? Hmm. I'm thinking that at some point I had to, um, you know, lie to her or uh, screw her over in a deal with my patron. Yeah. And uh, so you owe her a debt and uh, she's got her little fire in her eyes. You know, Salome, that this is one of the three dragons of Baltimore. Um, and uh, uh, she comes in and she looks at you and Keel kind of, so maybe you know each other? It's a good time for us to take our five minute break and we'll come back <laughs> and uh, continue on with that scene. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds good.
I was not expecting the dragon. <laughs> yeah, of all the people that <laughs> could have been here. Just as a reminder, we the dragon, she had the clutch of eggs in Johns Hopkins that were destroyed. <laughs> and Nikuru hid the eggs there. Uh, and then we were asking engineering uh, um, to try to help hide us, right? We're muted. <laughs> uh, so we know that she had some eggs that were in there. Mm. And uh, Hugo wasn't involved with that. Um, I just remember what, what, and I think I'm repeating what you said, Hugo is keeping an artifact for her. Uh, essentially a dragon slaying sword. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's the connection that you know. Okay. Um, a sword. Uh, so uh, there's a, a, a pause there and she will say, I'm going to go get changed. And then we can all have a nice talk. Wonderful. And then she'll push because my manners. You are Salome? Yes. Yes, my name is Salome. There's the smell of frost about you. Oh, I um I'm surprised you can tell. It stands out here in a city of summer. I guess it would. And she will head off to the bedroom to get changed. I'll turn on Keel and say, oh, I guess we both had some ulterior motives. What do you mean? I asked you here. You can help me with a with a deal, you know. Uh -huh. Stuff we're making. I'm making a deal, you know. I want, need some need a little backup here, and not from my court. It's good. It's good. I'm so glad you called. It's like I whispered into the ether and asked for help, and you called me. The you universe. You're only for this one, Keel. It's a dragon. Yeah. So what? Dragon's just a dragon. <sighs> Dragons are people too. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know you'd be bringing this gentleman with you, so maybe we're even on that. Yeah, I guess we are. <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> He's like, look, I'm I'm acting as a consultant for her on things that are happening. It might lead to bigger things. And now I can kind of say that you... And if, if, if Mr. Sato wants in on this, this slice of this action, can help out with this and so on, it'll be, all be good, okay? Yeah, I mean, we're here, so. I, I and, wanted in on Keel's good graces before he, uh, he sees how the deal actually goes. <laughs> I'll agree to this. Awesome. You, you, I like you. I like you. Yeah, just sit. sit. Do either of you want a drink? I need a drink, yes. Okay. Manhattan's, wasn't it? Always. All right. And for you, Mr. Sato? Do you have any whiskey? It looks like she's got a really nice whiskey here. Let me uh, pour it out here. Yeah, can't that? Uh, he'll come back. Clink's put the, the drinks down. He says, I, I couldn't chill your glass. I assume you can do that. <laughs> <sighs> yes, Keel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's back after a couple of minutes and she has taken your cue Salome and she's kind of put on a, a business power suit uh, to, to come back and uh, uh, you will see her go over to the bar and she pulls out a bottle that looks very old and she pours herself something that is like a, a deep purple color and she will come back and she will sit down and she will say, so you're Mr. Keel's 
Associates? Mr. Soulsmith? Associates is a strong word. Perhaps we're advisors. Excellent. We'll help him if we can. Well, uh, he, he knows the stakes, so I assume he called in his uh, most notable associates here. Well, I would love to hear your version of the deal. So of course, Kiel told us what he told us. Well, as you know, uh, I am preparing to go to war, and uh, I need people to lay the groundwork I need scouts on the ground to find out information. I've been away from town for a while, and I had I wished to engage someone who had not been in my circles previously. There's been an action taken against me. Someone has attacked me, has destroyed a clutch of my eggs. And I need to gain recompense. I need to find out who was involved. I need to find out why they did it. People don't just do these things. This is an act of war. I need to find out who I need to burn to the ground. And Keel says, and that's it. I know Baltimore. And, you know, I, I, of course, have contacts in the summer court. And my friend here, Salome, is an expert troubleshooter from the winter court who's come down here as an infiltrator, as a, a cut, a leading edge for them in this area. So she's gathered a whole network of spies and informants throughout the city. And, you know, Mr. Sato. And she goes, oh, yes. And you know, Mr. Sato has his own particular, it kind of turns to you looking for you to finish his sentence, Sato. I have connections and a great deal of information. Well, perhaps this will put us on a more even footing than uh, Sato. Yes, I, uh, I hope that our previous dealings won't um, won't engender you either way to our current deal. No, let's 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 put that past aside for the moment. Yes, for the moment. She says, "I can. Uh, uh, I have. I've promised significant remuneration to uh, Mr. Soulsmith." as well as objects of some power um, that I think would be either valuable to the summer court or would be valuable for someone who wants to take control of the summer court. Mr. Soulsmith, do you find these um, arrangements agreeable so far? I'm very happy with the negotiations. And now that I've got some partners on this, I'm even happier. Spread the work around. Oh, certainly. And the rewards. Absolutely. A little bit of that. I spent a lot of that. He kind of looks at you, Salome, looking for you to give the the, the high sign or this maybe just, just the tiniest bead of sweat on his brow as he looks to you to confirm in front of this dragon that you are all in. Now, I will also, I mean, we've got some moves here. If anybody wants to, to do figure something out or anything like that, don't forget we've got those things on the table. Um, but tell me he looks at you. Yeah, I do want to figure someone out, I think, because I want those relics that could help take over the summer court. <laughs> I want some big power moves. Um, okay. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, maybe as I'm like looking at uh, Keel, as we're like, as he's waiting, as I'm like weighing what I want to say, 
Um, I'm seeing the bead of sweat and I'm just, I'm looking at through our history, seeing how I could get him or seeing it like, if I figure out what's going on, right? Okay. Let me... So uh, let's have you roll, figure someone out with roll with mind. You get an additional question because he's in your faction. Well, I got a three or I got a four. So here's the thing is question. you still get a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Um, well, then I definitely want to ask, how could I get your character to give me these 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 relics, these means to uh, make major moves in the summer court? Drag this out a little bit, you know, make him nervous. Uh, uh, do the dance, do the talk with the dragon to the point where where he has to kind of, you know, give you what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, see, maybe like right when that be the sweat hits his eyebrow, I'll turn to Unjungri and I'll say, um, and you came to Kiel for this? He, yes, certainly he had had put feelers out before. Why? Was that a mistake? Well, I'm sure you know Kiel's reputation, but you know, if he had to drag me all the way here for these contacts and this network that I have established, that I have done the hard work of establishing. It's not like I'm unknown in Baltimore. I'm sure you heard about the Summer Court's attack on me. I had heard that they had thrown the wild hunt at you and you escaped unscathed. I'll look at Kiel <laughs> and saying, yeah, I escaped. I have these contacts. I wonder what can Keel do for you? Let's have you persuade an NPC. Okay, God, hopefully I finally get a good roll. <laughs> Number two of the day. <sighs> 13. <laughs> nice. The big one. Um, she will go yeah, I like you. You're in charge. Kill, okay. you'll help her. You're the one I'm going to deal with. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Well then. And she'll raise her glass. And then she'll drink it down and, and it kind of goes like liquid fire into her mouth. <laughs> and uh, you have the sense that you've been dismissed. Absolutely. Keel, let's talk it? outside. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Keel does not look happy. Like, like he's still smiling, but it's that forced smile of... Hey, that wasn't cool. Well, we're all making moves, Keel. I don't know why you're surprised. I, no. I helped you get down here, and this is how, you know... Yeah, well, we took a car down here. <laughs> well, it's more than just a car. Summer wards and all of that kind of thing, and those people who are on your ass from the Winter Court. If I'm not mistaken, you didn't do anything to help out my friend Salome. it could be argued that we're even given the trade-offs that we've made, but you know, I would think that history would count for something with us. Y'all yeah, like, like cup, uh, kills, kills face. And like, yeah, history does count for something. Um, I need a favor. <laughs> oh, you're so cold. Listen, I know, I know what I did up there. Let's say, how about help me out, help us out here, and I'll owe you. Okay, he's excited. What What do you need? I'll turn to and gesture to Sato. Oh, so I just you get it. Do you get a debt on him? You're now turning it over to Sato, so that Sato has a debt on him. I just have a friend who uh, is dying to meet you. I came all the way up here with my friend Salome to uh, 
to meet you myself, and I was not disappointed. Yeah, you know, you've got some strange friends. I, um, oh, you know, you kind of run in a very unusual set of circles, very rarefied air up there. Um, uh, uh, so, you know, I know there's been a lot of demon stuff going on in, in town and things. And so, so who is it that you want me to meet with? Um, I think I'm going to try to mislead him. Okay. Because I don't think he'll go on his own volition. Let's have you. Now, mind you, you uh, um, and uh, uh, even if this doesn't work, of course, you do. You can cash in that debt to get a plus three when you per go to persuade him. Okay. And <clears throat> excuse me. The advance I just took allows me to roll heart for misleading instead of mind. Oh, nice. So that was, what was England for? All right. Ooh, you got a heart of two. You are solidly there. So that's a nine. That is a nine. Um, so yeah, you get to pick two from the mislead distractor trick. Okay, I think I will confuse them uh, for some time to try to get my, you know, vagaries to to kind of float past without too much question. And um, let's expose a weakness or flaw since we're going to be dealing with him for a while, probably. Um. Yeah, you you. You kind of press on him, and you realize that he is he is out here in the wind, like 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 he has nothing, nothing to support what he's trying to do here. Um, you are the first like actual help that he has on this, and you kind of kind of stress on that, um, and and that gets him that gets him to ignore the implications just because he doesn't want to alienate you to. Um, because this is how he operates. He's always right there on the edge. Um, and Sato, don't forget to mark wild. Okay. Um, and uh, he will will say, "Okay, uh, sure. Whenever you want to make the arrangements, I'll 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 meet with this friend of yours. I can can smile, give him the charm, that kind of thing. It's all good. It's what I'm what I'm about." That's exactly what he's uh, looking for, I believe. Awesome, awesome. Okay. And uh, now or, or later? Um, probably later. Uh, let me okay. uh, get in contact with him, if you don't mind. Right. Well, let me give you my digits. Yes. We'll, we'll exchange phone numbers, of course. Okay. <laughs> um, and he says, well, I'm going to take off. I've got things to, to get into place. Um, let's, have a, let's have a meeting of the minds tomorrow. Yes, I think that sounds great. Don't you, Salome? Your place, uh, your place, Salome, the Sprite, or do you want to come to Flanagan's to, to meet up or someplace else? Well, let's leverage this network of contacts I allegedly have and meet somewhere a little more neutral. All right, all right. Uh, you pick the place, you call me, okay? I sure will. All right. And, uh, yeah, uh, he he takes off. Okay. I think the first thing I want to do is call up. Um, I forgot Mr. Leather's first name, but Matthew. Call him up. Matthew. Okay. And uh, well, I've uh, I've got what you asked for already. You are amazing. Not only do I have his whereabouts, but I have arranged a meet at your convenience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just tell me when and where. Well, I thought you might want to pick a place that wouldn't give you away. So you tell me where you'd like to to meet. And I'll oh, let pass me... it along. Not someplace old. There is a Hard Rock Cafe up at one of the malls by... Goucher College up north. Um, it's it's a tawdry place, um, uh, not well attended, 
um, in a dying mall. Uh, so let's meet there. Perfect. Inconspicuous. That will inconspicuous reduce the chance of collateral damage, all of that. I love it. I will, uh, I'll arrange everything. Awesome. It was very good working with you. I hope we uh, talk again. Absolutely. Now, now, have you told Salome who it is that you're I've forgotten? I didn't give him a name or a, her, her name. Um, I think I just mentioned that Leathers was an immortal. Do you, do we want to have you roll, put a face to a name on that? Salome? Yeah. Yeah. Because like that, that would be power. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see what I know about Mr. Leathers. Um, power is at one. Come on, go for your party. No more curses. It's a six. <laughs> that is a six. Um, you know what? You've gotten hit a lot today, so I'm just going to say you don't know him. Does that seem fair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't think there's any need to cause you any more, more pain or panic, but you still do get to ma uh, um, mark it. Nice. Uh, so you've got the deal with the book. You've got your own things you want to, uh, uh, interact with. You've got this meeting to set up. Um, uh, what's on, what's on your plate? What do you want to do? Salome, um, uh, especially since the dragon has just contracted, uh, essentially for you to help her find out uh, what you did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think immediately after Kiel's gone, maybe Sato and I are getting the car back to somewhere, maybe the club or I don't know where, somewhere, wherever we're going. Um, I just want to have a conversation with Sato so we can be on the same page about what, is, what on earth is going on. Yes. Uh, so I think um, we're in the car. Sato, this is a very precarious situation. I'm sure you following. <laughs> Well, I, I was a little surprised when you spoke up during the meeting. Yes, um, well, but honestly, I've had a previous run-in with that dragon, and I'm hoping to clear the air between us. And this might be just a ticket if yeah. we can pull it off. Yes, that's exactly the, the issue. I think we have a small window of opportunity because I think the people she's looking for is us, but. <laughs> I think if we can frame it right, we can help you out and get the Yakuza off your back, give the dragon what she wants, and hopefully come out of this unharmed. I was thinking the exact same thing. I was going to pass some, um, you know, a little bit untrue information about the Yakuza to Soulsmith, but now we don't have to since you're the, uh, the leader of this operation. Yes. Um, well, yeah. maybe it would still be good to pass it through Soul Smith, though, because if the dragon knows we're associates, if we're working together, it might seem too convenient that this group who's coming after you is suddenly also responsible for that. <sighs> yes, that's a good point. Maybe we can uh, use Soul Smith still. He could be a good go between. Um, Maybe even if things don't go well, it'll uh, get blamed on him instead of you or us. Yes. <laughs> Soul Smith uh, will probably take some careful maneuvering, but I think we'll be able to use him for what we need. Well, and even though we were at the library, we did not set it on fire. That's the enduring truth. <laughs> <laughs> don't even have to lie about that one. We, we really did not cause it, but I know we're the ones being painted for that. Mm -hmm. I'll see what I can do with the specters. Maybe we, I can pass on some other fake and some false information, plant that. Maybe they'll be, we can leverage their expertise in actually being hidden. <laughs> well, I wonder if we can find out if the Yakuza are still in town and I have a sneaking suspicion that Kagami is still involved in in that as well. Yes. 
We should find Niguru when we can. Yes. And if we could get the dragon and Kagami to fight, I think we would all come out winners in that. Yes. That would be it. For maybe Niguru, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> That's the sire that he's looking for. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh. This is why Salome and I are having this conversation in private. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of moves to be made, and probably a lot of bridges are going to get burned. But... Absolutely. So, so let's start with you, Salome. What what is what is step one for Salome in setting this up? Oh man. Um, yeah, I think Salome is thinking. Maybe the last thing we agreed on, um, if it makes sense, Josh, is that we um, maybe we'll hold off on. The yakuza piece, because if that's our like, if that's our like, kind of like uh, our ace, our trump card, then um, maybe we'll hold off on revealing that one to Soulsmith, and like we'll kind of set up the pieces so we can knock them over. And then Soulsmith's like, it's the yakuza. <laughs> um, so I think that I want to, I need to make some reparations with the Costa. <laughs> okay, I think. <laughs> Uh, so, do you want to want to hit the streets with the specters, or do you just want to go talk to DaCosta? Um, well, I guess it de it depends on maybe it depends on how DaCosta is feeling about me because of what went down at the murder house. So, if I need to like, if DaCosta is just not making himself available to me, then I maybe need to hit the streets to find leverage or some sort of access, or if. You know, you're maybe. you're a potent character. He has a debt on you, so he definitely does want to see you. Okay. Um, uh, so you will again go to the park, and uh, 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 by yourself, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, again, you'll get that that pressure, that feeling of the sort of the 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 walk through the woods with the ghosts around. Um, you know. You'll probably you have enough sense that you can probably smell the recent murders, that kind of thing around here. Um, uh, it is a it is a terrible park, um, and DaCosta will he doesn't like to materialize. Uh, like so, it always just looks like he's walked around, you know, uh, a a turn in the path when you run into him. And he's like, wow. Huh. Tacosta. Molly is kind of upset. Yeah. And was... as I understand it, one of my resources, my safe house, not only has been blown, it's been destroyed. <sighs> yeah, that. Uh, it was really did not go as planned. Uh, we've, I'm gonna guess so because you walked in here into my den alone. So I'm gonna bet that that wasn't planned. Yeah, I oh you beg to cost that. I'm here. To make amends. I don't want any trouble. I just want to catch things up. Again, I, as I said to you before, I'm no friend of the Fae. I'm no friend of Shiloh. But, you know, I, I cut you the slack because you're from the Winter Court. And old packs and contracts going back on that. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to make this up to me? Why do you need to cost to just name it? You sure you want to put it that way? You know, I mean, that's the, you put it that way. You are, are looking at making a promise. Uh, it says that to you. All the packs and debts, right? I I really burned you, and I'm aware of that. So I think I need to balance the, balance it out. 
Hmm. That is an interesting thing. You were in that fire. Some people have said so, yes. That's why Shiloh was after you. Shiloh, well, Shiloh's looking for a specific thing, fire or not. If he thinks I have it, he'll pursue me. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Here is what I want. I want to know what else was taken from the vault. That's all. Honestly, but at this point, I'm I'm tired of <laughs> this vault. Just I know, I know, no, I know. I know there was a book taken out, but I'm guessing there were other things taken out. Well, I don't know. I don't know, actually. Salome looks confused and is like, nah, as far as I know, it was just a book. See, here's the thing. I spoke to one of the gentlemen who got killed in the vault he said there were some people that came down that killed them and went into the vault now did they just go into the vault to plant the thing to do this well, i'm assuming not hmm. if they went in there in this place that had been closed off to people for a long time there's got to be something else that they took. Yeah. Okay. I remember now. Um, Salome says, um, you know, you know what? We took a book, but it wasn't what we were. It wasn't what we went down there to find. The, the other, the, the other book. <laughs> um, you described the book essentially that they, that's, whoever had cut the pages all out of it and left that note in its place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I want you to keep your ears open. And if there's something else was taken besides, you know, vandalizing a book and whatever other thing Shiloh's got his dander in a huff about, um, I want to know. Okay. I want to be the first to know. Okay, easy enough. Will you promise me that? Absolutely, I promise you. Then we are even. I appreciate you taking time out to come here and and make good your debt in such a timely fashion. Well, if there's... Uh, well, I'm on the run here in Baltimore, so uh -huh. you know, I can't really afford to have enemies. You'll always have friends among the dead. <laughs> I guess I'll find comfort in that somehow. Uh, I would have cut from you to, to Sato then uh, on that note. Sato, what's your next step? Uh, I think I want to go and visit the medic with the sushi shop. Okay. Uh, in my head, I've named her Hana. Okay. And... Um, I want to see if she has any information about the whereabouts of the Yakuza who were asking about us. Ah, so I think that's going to be a hit the streets um, with mortality. Does that seem like a fair way to handle that? Yeah. All right, it's just going to be a straight roll. Seven. Seven. All right, let me put a, I've got a picture for her. A 
put in the mortality column there. Oh, did it go? Oh, it jumped up. There we go. Um, so sweet. Uh, so, she'll say, I could find out, but, uh, you know, that means me getting my fingers in with the Yakuza stuff and with some of the others. You're right. And, and I, I kind of like lean in and, you know, maybe reach, reach out my hand to, to her or something and say, uh, I, I don't want you involved. Is there, I was just wondering if there was something you'd heard or if I should, is there someplace I can look? I don't want to endanger you in any way. Look, I can tell you, but I don't want this blowing back on me. Because if they find out that I gave you direction, you know what what will happen. I definitely do. So this is going to sound very odd, but... I know where their chef is. That does not surprise me. They brought a big group up from New York. Like not a little thing, like, like, like full blown stepping into the area. And they brought some staff with them. And I only know that because when I went down to Fisherman's Wharf to do my buys as usual, some of my choice bits from people that I know had already been scooped up. And of course, that's people stepping in my territory, and so I followed it back. So this really would lead right back to you. I understand. Yeah. There's a place called the Union Merchant Exchange Building. Old, old Baltimore building downtown. Um, as I understand it, has some apartments, but also has office space. And that's where they are holed up. Understood. Thank you for this. I will not breathe a word of it to anyone. We'll pretend I found it out on my own. And I appreciate the uh, the risk you're taking for me. Old history. Old history. Yes, indeed. She says, I still remember your sister. It is my greatest wish that you will get to see her again someday. I don't know. After what you've said she's been through. And she trails off on that. I think I'll finish my sake and f- fill up uh, Hana's glass and and leave it that. Okay. Uh, let's come back to Salome. Um, do you have something else you want to talk to Costa about? Or do you want to hit the streets? Or do you want to meet up with Sato? Or something else? Um, yeah, maybe, um, I think I still, yeah, I think I want to pursue this favor, this promise for DaCosta, because I want to get this leverage on the ghosts so we can set this up right. Um, but I don't know what it is. (laughs) Um, Let's have you roll with, I think we're kind of investigating a place of power here. Does that seem like fair? Um, And let me have you roll with uh, mortality. Okay. Because this were essentially mortals that 
had control over it. Does that seem fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm, it's kind of the best game, the Johns Hopkins area. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, if you want, I will out of, uh, out of things. Uh, if you want to spend one of the debts that, uh, uh, you have on Hugo, uh, I will let you use that to essentially have him provide assistance to you. I like that. Okay. Essentially have him give you a plus one on the roll. Okay. Yeah. I got a nine. A nine. So you will look into this. Clearly this had been a a safe space that had been kind of created between a number of factions. Um but was kind of quiet and on the down low, um, mm. had been sealed. Um, clearly someone, you know, managed to find out about exactly what it was and how to get past those seals. Now, here's the weird thing to you, of course, is that that letter that was down there was definitely Kagami's handwriting. Nikoru identified that, right? Mm. What was she doing with Yakuza hunters? Mm. That's a whole other question. But the other thing that you will pick up from sort of the, the network of, uh, imagine sort of the, the midnight society, people who would have worked on campus, who would have seen maybe a few things in the aftermath of this or even beforehand, is that they do describe... Some of the Yakuza, besides the, the ones that ended up staying and gunning people down, took off and they had with them these containers. And uh, they say these containers had been there for a while. They were put there special. We never know, knew what they were. Um, but they were electronic and they were heated. Oh man, <laughs> I can make an educated guess. <laughs> oh. Does that seem like fair info for you? Yes, that's very fair. That's an excellent lead. Um, yeah, and so you'll 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 talk as more as we get a sense of that 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 there there that the various like aware people and scholars had been involved with this and that they took a major hit in this that they are kind of reeling from this loss, um, uh, and uh, also that the 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 that there are these yakuza hunters who may be making a play for kind of taking things over here in Baltimore. Sato, do you want to do something, or should we bring you two together again? I was thinking it would be good to, to join back up. I uh, am certainly not going to go after the Yakuza alone or anything like that. Okay. Uh, so, All right, so the, the two of you can meet up again. At no. the club or somewhere neutral? I like Salome's club, I mean. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think it's a club. Maybe it's like uh, it's early or it's the afternoon, like before opening, right? So we get like there's light pouring in from weird windows and like workers setting up the stage and everything. It's all mm -hmm. different scenes. Sweeping things down, the bartenders doing inventory, all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll bring over you the basket of popcorn and things as you're sitting there. Maybe Salome has to like go back and make her own drinks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Salome has a run of the place. So, like, like literally, when she walks behind the bar, they they don't say anything. You know, uh, uh, in their mind, she's as much a fixture of this place as Ariva. She's kind of wormed her way in there. Like that, I'll pour us both some some whiskey. This is a serious. Okay. We're in we're in some stuff. <laughs> um. So, where'd you find out, Sato? Where've you been? I uh, went to see some old friends, and I found out where the Yakuza are holed up. 
it seems like they might be making more of a play for the city than I, I originally thought. I thought they were here just for me, um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. That's interesting. I um, went back by Johns Hopkins and some of the some of the, the employees, some some of the the people who worked in the special library, the special collections library, <laughs> um, had saw some uh, or heard some interesting things about some men from an organization leaving with some containers. Um, I thought it might be the Yakuza. Hmm. Like, so it wasn't just the book they were after. I mean, maybe it wasn't the book at all. I don't know what these containers were, but they went in early, took those out, and then, I don't know, set up a trap, I guess? Yeah. <sighs> hmm. Do we know where the Yakuza are, like, staged in Baltimore? I have a building uh, location that has plenty of room hmm. for quite a few people. Um, I think they've moved a branch of their of the Yakuza from New York here, probably to try to get a foothold and take over the city. Hmm. If only we could... a lot of information, but I don't know what we can do with it other than uh, maybe uh, talk with the dragon again or share some of it with um, Keel and see if hmm. he wants to give the dragon a call. Yeah, maybe we'll use Keel to pass information to the dragon. I was thinking I could leverage the specters and maybe they can have some access that wouldn't be as easy for us. If we can, if we can ascertain what is in these containers, I think we might have a lot of leverage. Because I have an idea, but I don't know anything for sure. Well, we certainly will need some kind of proof if we're going to take it back to take it back to the dragon. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, what's the plan then? First, you talk to De Costa first to tell him. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm trying to think of how to frame that. I want. I'll tell him. Do you mention that you have oh, other yeah, means of contacting De Costa? Besides going to the park, now you have some rapport. Yeah, surely there's got to be some way. Because um, yeah. specters can manifest elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you call a deadline and oh. he shows up? Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> I like that. Maybe there's like a, there's some old phone connected to the landline still in some back room. Oh, yeah. At the club. Like like a pay phone that's that's not connected to anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and you call up and essentially it's it's a deadline, but then it connects up to a pager. You know, so a deadline to a dead service. Yeah. Um, yeah. um and you know, maybe about 15, 20 minutes later you'll get that. You probably don't notice it because you're used to it. But for Sato, you'll notice that the room gets cold. And uh, uh, you will see the Costa uh, appears and uh, he comes waltzing in. Uh, Ariva clearly knows him, but kind of stays away. He, she finds him a little disconcerting. And uh, he will. He's clearly manifested fully, like like solid. So he does that thing where he pulls the chair out, um, and he smells like like the woods and and like pine needles and cigarette smoke, and you know uh, old bottles of beer. It's all of that sort of shitty woods, you know, kids trashed a park smell to him, and. Uh, 
he's like, hey, you called? It's Acosta. Can I pour you a drink? No. no. Straight to business, then. I, no, I, I wish I could. I really <laughs> oh. do. Sorry, my mistake. But I am on the wagon, so to speak. Who's this? This is my good friend, Sato Masaru. The Costa, it is nice to meet you. You're something, aren't you? Yes. It does kind of get a, a little a little leery. You the hmm. It's just more than a little whiff of the gatekeeper about you. Uh I, I understand. If if it's uncomfortable, I'll uh No, no, we're all good. Good go good. Look, look. Salome's a friend, old friend from way back. So I'm going to trust that this is all, all on the level. Salome, you called me. I got a lead. Mm hmm. For what I promised you. Unfortunately, I need to ask, ask some help in, in figuring out exactly what it is. Okay. Tell me the story. Well, the John Hopkins fire, mm -hmm. where we allegedly were, where we allegedly left with two books. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, rumor has it that some, a group, some Yakuza. Allegedly. In, allegedly, okay. yes. <laughs> went in earlier, much earlier. And uh, before they even left this note and cut out the pages of the other book, there were some containers, some electronic heated containers taken. And what do you think's in there? I would rather be sure than start making any guesses. And we're, how do I come into this? It looks at both of you. Well, your, your faction has a bit more access, a little bit easier time gaining access than either of us might. So we can give you a location, we can give you a direction. Mm -hmm. We need your eyes. All right. So you want to a a have us act as your investigators? Well, you put it bluntly. Nah, no, no, no. I just want to. I want to be certain that we're all on the same page. You or Fay? We have to be precise about these things, right? <laughs> I forget you know how this all works. Yes. We made too many mistakes with the summer court. We won't make those mistakes again. Yeah, fair enough. Even though it's just a little old me. All right, we'll do that. Give me the location. I will send some people in and uh, we can sit here uh, and uh, chat while they go and do their business. All right. That sounds wonderful. He, he seems, he seems like he's very into this. <laughs> as in he's uh, interested in the outcome as well. Yeah. Now you do have some moves. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm now afraid I should have been more precise. Uh, do either of you want to do anything uh, or do you just want to give them the info? Yeah, I mean, maybe with that conversation about like, we know how they work and we, we now have to be exact. Um, maybe I can take a chance to figure them out. Yeah, figure them out is a great move to do. Roll with mine. That's fun. Let's 
Eight. Hey, how about that? Uh, that means that you get one hold. Okay, and they hold one on me as well. <laughs> uh, well, mostly, I mean, immediately what I want to know is... Um, Oh, I guess with what's the cost of hoping to get from this situation? Oh, he's very much hoping that those are dragon eggs, and he is hoping to have his people steal one if there are multiples um, before all this goes down. Oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah, have. should be more precise. <laughs> <laughs> um, jeez. <laughs> well, I got also. Spend... Wait, I only get one hold, right? You only get one hold. Oh, okay. All right. That's my hold then. <sighs> How could he get your character to not tell Sato that? Oh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I, um, by promising his faction support in my overthrowing the summer court. <laughs> he says, look, you are your winter court. And if we don't care for the summer court, you know, they've done us wrong. And if it ever comes down to it, you know, if there ever comes a war between it, you know, you've got us to back you up. Thanks. Let me come to Sato now. Now, I want to give Sato the opportunity to also do similar moves or similar things here, just, just so that I don't feel like we've closed you out of the situation there. Um, hmm. I think Sato is actually a little bit preoccupied um, about an unrelated matter. I think he wants to ask DaCosta... Um, you deal in in spirits and things of that nature. Absolutely. You know, to check on someone for me, someone who might be on the other side and might not. Sure. Who? Salome, would you mind retrieving the the necklace that I had you hold on to for me? Yeah, of course. I'll go and. I think maybe it's kept in like mm, there's a locker in my little changing room and there's probably like a really nice ornate like box. I'll bring that out the whole box. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, I'll open the box and kind of hold the necklace out to DaCosta and say this was my sister's and I don't know if she's on your side on my side or somewhere in between. Would you like me to try and, and channel and tell? That would be wonderful. That's exactly what I would like. I would be more than happy to do this favor for you. <laughs> and I would definitely consider it a favor. And he will have you slide it over in front of him and uh, he will look at it, and you see him run his finger around it on the, the table, and you'll see like a line of frost appear there around it. Um, and uh, he will kind of lean over, and he breathes out like cigarette smoke out onto it, and it kind of hangs in the air there. Um, and, uh, he will concentrate and he will focus. And then he will look up at you and you go, brother, it hurts so much. It always hurts. It we're here. When, when will you come? How, why, why have you not? They say you're coming, but you never come here. It hurts so She's not dead. Oh, I, th I think uh, 
you see some tears, you know, like welling up in Sato's eyes. <sighs> Thank you, DaCosta. I wouldn't have wanted to know that. And he'll push the thing back over to you. I'll put Ugh. it back in the box and. Whew. Thank you, Salome. I'm sorry you had to see that as well. We'll get her back. Yes, someday, hopefully soon. Dacasta says, you were going to give me an address? I'll um I'll name the building and mention the um the offices and, and things like that. Okay. Um I think that one of you needs to roll investigate a place of power. Essentially, this is you're using them uh as the, the means here um to do that. So one of you needs to roll with mortality. Uh the other one can lend a hand if you want. My mortality is zero. Yeah, my mortality is zero as well. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you can certainly lend a hand if you want me to roll it. Yeah, my dice are cursed, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll lend a hand then, Salome. Mm, let's do okay, roll wild. I got a nine. Excellent. So you will have a plus one on your roll, Sato. Awesome. Ooh, a four. So this one didn't help. <laughs> DaCosta comes back and he says, Yes, they're there. Uh you if you're gonna do something, you'd better do it now. Um, because they are up and active and moving, and they know that people know where they are. So whatever you're going to do, you better do it now. Salome, can you call Keel? Yeah. I was just in, in the back of my head, <laughs> Sato knows that Keel might not be available for certain reasons. Um, but we're going to try that first. Um. Yeah, what do you? I was actually thinking of calling Keel too, but I was thinking of trying to get him to leverage the summer court <laughs> to like run some interference or whatever, and maybe we could just like sneak behind the back. But what were you thinking? Um, I was thinking of having him just call the dragon directly and oh, tell okay. her the location and what we suspect, even though we don't have all the information we need. Okay, I like that. That's far more direct. <laughs> no, I think that's good. Um, yeah. Oh, I'll call up Keel and, um... Hi, this is Keel. Leave me a message. Oh, God. <laughs> Keel, with Salome. Call me back immediately. <laughs> so I guess we have to call the dragon then. What? <laughs> um, Sada, you should call. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll do it. Pull up my phone. I'm I'm gonna. Mm, is DaCosta gone at this point? Uh, yeah, DaCosta actually, you know, he tells you that, and then he takes off for some reason. Like, <laughs> you know, and, like he has to go and take care of something. Oh, okay. Um. So then, yeah, maybe Salome and I will go off to a little bit of like a corner, or maybe back to her uh, changing room or something like that, and. Um, I'll call call the dragon and put her on speakerphone. <laughs> Am I on speakerphone? No. Um, uh, <laughs> Mr. Masaru Salome. Yes, we have some information sooner than we expected. Um, and I believe it needs to be acted on quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell me. We have found what we believe to be your eggs intact in some sort of... Um... Uh, her voice kind of shifts down a couple of octaves. What? Where? That phone like shakes on the table. <laughs> um, 
Tell me now. I'll give her the address. Click. God. <laughs> 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 and I think what we will see then is within like the next hour fire in downtown Baltimore. Uh, <laughs> firefighters are evacuating a building in downtown Baltimore. It's as if you had a gas line explosion. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah. And you will will see this big old brick Baltimore building smoke billowing out of the the, the windows and and just fire um, and some of it has kind of a purplish tinge to it that that when you you know it might be just the optics the 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 slant of light something like that um, and uh, it will burn and um, people will describe also having seen like some kind of drone or helicopter or something in the area that beforehand they're not sure. Um, uh, and uh, it is just, it, it is, it is burning down. They've cleared the blocks around it. Um, and I think that's where we're going to stop for today. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like a good place. <laughs> it is. At the end of session, uh, if you learn something meaningful about a faction, you can increase your score in that faction and decrease your score in another, in a different faction. So is there anyone you want to go up one and down one, uh, Salome? Yeah, maybe night. I think I'm going to increase night for the ghosts. Okay. Um, I feel like our relationship has gone better, increased. I know more of their priorities and stuff. And what are you dropping? I think power. Okay. I think. I'm very surprised and shocked and overwhelmed by especially this dragon. I don't know what the wizards are up to. Yeah. Uh, and Sato, what about you? The the dragon is power. Right? The dragon is wild. Oh, oh the dragon's wild. Okay. Surprisingly to me. Um the uh, the the power is wizard, oracle, hallowed, and immortal. I don't want to go down in wild because I feel like we've gotten some good. And you can you can stay on that level. That's no problem. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay where I am. Okay. Um, does do you think either of you owe the other one a favor, or you guys? It felt like you were kind of on even keel throughout this. Yeah. Um... I don't yeah. think so. The, the uh, debt we already have together with uh, the stuff for my sister. Yeah, I think I think, I think that works. Together. Yeah. That 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 works. And now, Darren, you're not with us next time, right? Right. Right. Um, but we'll have Sato here, so hopefully we can 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 uh, wrap up some threads on Sato's story, and we should have Nakoro back. I hope this was okay. Uh, doing the, the two player session, I enjoyed it. We got a lot more spotlight time for everybody. No, it was yeah, super it was good. Fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun here. Um, uh, we could make all those set up that massive, <laughs> all those hijinks. <laughs> yes, I really, I'm really digging Urban Shadows. I hadn't had a chance to run it before, I'd only run it, you know, sort of with my changeling hacks. So mm -hmm. seeing it actually play out, I'm very excited by it. So yeah, yeah, I really like it. This is the first, like, I've played, like, one or two sessions here and there. It's the first, like, continuous one I've done. Yeah. I just love how connected everything is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's And a lot of good NPCs and stuff to, to play off of, so. All right, well, I'm going to stop the broadcast.